Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the long awaited, highly requested, slightly delayed how to bike season two. The feedback in season one was unreal and it makes the whole team extremely proud of the quality of what we delivered. But after receiving this praise in person from a few lovely viewers, the following sentence was usually, <laughs> but I still can't do it. It's not your fault. I went too big in season one. There's so much information in there. It was just, it was hard to find the juicy nuggets to dig out and apply on the trail. I'm sorry. So this season is going to be a little different. You won't need to settle in with your slippers and a cup of tea. I can't do that. This season will be efficient to the point. Season one was the theory. Now it's time for the practical. <laughs> First, commit to learning a specific skill. Make the decision in your head that you are actually going to do it. You have to commit to it. Learning can be really hard and it requires determination, which can put people off, it's kind of scary, but applying everything in this video, it will be easier. And let's be honest, riding bikes is fun, so you should always have a good time. Take Amy here. World Cup racer and certified competent bike rider. Whee. Amy, can you manual? No. <laughs> Why not? I don't know, it's, just, it's hard. <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah, I think it's going to be a cool skill to learn. You're contractually obliged to do so, so let's go. Yay. By the end of today, <laughs> you probably still won't be able to do it. But with a plan and some more practice, you will crack it. Anyone can learn something new, even you. Glad. So, as we fire up the wood chipper in the background, we have a skill, now the plan. I'd recommend something super simple, like I'm gonna dedicate 20 minutes once a week to practicing my chosen skill. This can be during your weekly ride or sometime you've set aside just for this task. It could be more often than this or less often, just stick it in your calendar to give you some sort of structure to follow. Trying to get some friends to commit to the same thing can help as your guilt of letting your friends down is often more powerful than letting yourself down. You know what I mean? And group learning is always better than on your own. I can already do it, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> 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 Always try to minimize the risk when learning something new. This means picking a good location, a real quiet one, wearing appropriate protection, or having someone on hand to help should anything unplanned happen. Now, for the important part, the learning and feedback process. I find it's good to start with a recording of where you are currently at to compare your progress to. Slow motion video is the best tool that you have for this. Get a friend to film you or balance your phone somewhere or even get a tripod to make things easier. Video is the secret to figuring out what you were doing wrong and also what you were doing right. Oh, that was it! Next, compare what you are currently doing with what you are supposed to be doing. In this series, we'll include some handy reference images for each skill for you to compare against. Or, if you've watched season one, you should have a good idea of what should be happening. You are looking for differences in your positioning on the bike. Are you further back or forward? Are your arms bent or straight? Are you too squatted in the bike? Are your knees in front of your feet or behind? Are your heels dipped? But also timing. Did you straighten your arms too quickly? Did you extend your legs too late? This is why it's good to film in slow motion so you can see clearly what happened and its outcome on the skill. It's different for each skill, but you will get better at spotting the differences with practice. Stood up more on that one at the end. But also, pay close attention to your internal feedback. How did it feel? Did it feel awkward, smooth, effortless, jerky? Whoa. I didn't feel like I straightened my legs and I didn't feel my back go like this. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we film ourselves is to identify the differences between feel and real. Sometimes things feel exactly how it happened. Other times there is a huge difference between how things feel and what was actually real. During this film and review process, you should start to bring the feel and real closer together. Make big, exaggerated changes in the direction you feel is required. I got scared. 
feel the differences. Review the video, and with these two points of feedback, you'll get closer to your goal. Remember to avoid burnout. I can't do it, Glenn. It's not happening today. Damn it. Amy cannot act. Identify when progress is halted and either call it for the day, enjoy the rest of your ride, or take a break. During your break, visualize and try to feel yourself doing the skill perfectly. Imagine the position on the bike, the weight in your limbs, the control. It can really help to make things click. And hey, you're not gonna get it right away. Just like we said in season one, you're probably gonna suck. You will suck. You will suck hard. You will. <laughs> but embracing that and then celebrating the small victories as you progress will get you there. Way. I believe in you. I'm going to do it. That's it. Super simple, but also frustratingly difficult. Take this process, set some goals, craft a plan for yourself. Use the other videos we'll be releasing in this season as lesson plans to get better at bikes and let us know how it goes. Tag at Pink Bike in the socials, hashtag how to bike on some of your success and failure stories. And we'll try to create a little learning community that really celebrates getting better on a bike. Good luck out there. And we'll see you soon. No. Anybody can learn something new, even you. <laughs> Glad. <laughs> Let's not high five again, because my hand still hurts. <laughs>